In his great book about philosophy of art, the master painter Robert Henry had a very strong stance on art that is truly original and authentic versus art that is simply peculiar. And the point that he was trying to make is that real originality, real authenticity requires that you know your fundamentals very well and that you do a true essential exploration of your very self in order to be able to transmit that through your art. That anything else was just a cheap attempt at originality by creating things that were simply peculiar. This channel is Meditation Amsterdam. My name is Pablo and I want to make a case in this video about how as humans our identification with our egoic sense of individuality has not only polluted how life feels but it has polluted every sphere of life in which the real article has been replaced by a cheap copy of the real article. Um, in order to illustrate this, I have taken certain virtues or values such as love, such as freedom, and um, shown how the real thing is being replaced or has been replaced with um, a fake copy. So we could start by looking at the notion of freedom, for example. Our notion of freedom has been polluted for us to believe that if we only quit our day jobs and get away from it all, that we will therefore have broken free of our pettiness, our lack of adventurousness and um, our sort of uh, risk averse mentality that never went out there and, you know, took the great adventure. And while there's something to be said about that, you know, to become part of the hordes of digital nomads sitting at beach cafes and spoiling the view for uh, the tourists is um, a mental idea of what freedom is like. So, in other words, freedom is a freedom is a sense, is a state of mind. Uh, if I want to refer to its internal nature, and instead. Becoming a digital nomad or escaping it all is the mental idea of freedom. Is the egoic individuality's best attempt at showing itself that it is free when in fact it has not earned that freedom and could never earn that freedom because it's just a series of mental processes. We see it also in political correctness. So love, intimacy and true respect from one another, for one another has been replaced with fabricated and enforced niceness. Now just imagine if we would suggest that that is the way to have a, a nice romantic relationship, for example, right? A, nice, a romantic relationship based on enforced niceness is essentially dead. It's, it's just, it's a caricature of the real thing. And of course, Back to the book of Robert Henry, uh, even authenticity itself has been replaced with peculiarity in people. I mean, just go to an airport or just, you know, walk around in the street and, and just look at the overt attempts at being unique, at being special, at being an individual, at being authentic. But if you scratch below the surface, how many people have actually entered their heart? How many people have truly allow themselves to become completely vulnerable and completely exposed for the sake of finding that true authenticity versus just dressing funny or getting a bunch of tattoos or things that in the mind appear as that which shows that you have become, in fact, an authentic person. So there you have already three big values, freedom, love, authenticity, that have been completely corrupted by the ego's attempt at being the real thing and having those traits as a matter of fact. Now, the ego itself, of course, is the biggest lie of it all. Our sense of, of 
identity, our, sake, our sense of being a personality or being an individual, is completely spurious. That spuriousness is what has now permeated every beautiful sphere of life. Philosophy itself fell at some point. Plato used to consider philosophy as the love not so much of accumulating knowledge, but the love of knowingness, our ability to apprehend in a sensory way. And when Aristotle came around, he thought philosophy was the love of accumulating ideas. So that also fell. And so you see the ego at the core of all this because the ego is a mental process that really wants to be real. It wants to be the real self. It's almost like Pinocchio, right? The, the wooden boy that is really attempting to become a real boy and can never quite do so. And so what you see happening is that for the ego, in order to become free, loving, philosophical, and authentic, it creates ideas in your head about what that is like. But they are really, really silly caricatures of the real thing. So uh, the reason why I, I wanted to make this video is because I want to highlight that myself doing these videos, uh, spending many, many hours every, every week in uh, meditative practices and trying to convey the importance of this to an audience is, is not just to spend time or entertain myself, although this is actually quite entertaining, but it's because it truly matters whether you go to your deathbed having known your real self or not. Otherwise, you will simply live the caricature, the facsimile of a life. It will not be the real article. You will live a life with an identity that is false, interacting with caricatures of what real love, real freedom, and real uh, authenticity are about. And that's simply not okay. If you feel it in your bones, if you feel the anxiety or the loneliness or, or all these um, invocations to, to have something better, then um, I really do invite you to do these practices. Try to learn how to meditate, le learn basic breath work, learn basic embodiment. There are myriad teachers out there t teaching this stuff. Take it to heart and then the path can become something that will really make you develop on a completely different level. So signing off for today, um, thanks for listening this far. Um, if you think this is valuable content, I'm curious to hear what you have to think in the comments. And um, others may benefit from this content as well. And your liking, sharing and subscribing makes that possible and also keeps me super motivated. So thanks for listening. I'll be back with more videos as usual. And until then, cheerio. Bye bye.